Well, happy Monday, everybody. Martin Luther King Day. A lot of people mm -hmm. have the day off work. The, the dedicated three. But years. we're here. We're here. Um, hard to believe today marks 15 years wow. since the miracle on the Hudson. Um, we're going to talk more about this after this story airs, but let us know in the comments, where were you uh, that day 15 years ago? Um, of course, 155 people survived that emergency landing in New York's Hudson River. The plane was headed to Charlotte. Uh, many on, on the passengers on board were from this area. WCNC Charlotte's Michelle Bowden got the chance um, to sit down with some of those passengers uh, who are really a part of history mm -hmm. now. The passengers we talked to say in the last five years, their perspective has really changed and their new takeaway, something we can all learn from. Only words he ever said to us was, uh, this is your captain speaking, Brace for Impact. When I first heard Brace for Impact, I thought that was it. Yeah. I had to kind of quickly go through the grief cycle and accept it. I can still smell the smoke, the puff of smoke coming in the, from the engines. I can still hear the sounds. I can hear the sounds of people whispering to each other, what happened, what happened. So I saw the engine on fire, flames shooting out the engine, and uh, you know that to me was like, this is not good. There were just so many little frames that just stick in your mind. You just, they don't fade. When flight 1549 from New York to Charlotte crashed into the Hudson River, that was just the beginning of the ordeal. The 155 people on board, many from the Queen City, had to figure out how to get out of the plane and survive the icy waters they'd landed in. And once the plane settled and I'm like, oh my God, I'm looking at like, you know, I'm in one piece. And then the water comes in and I'm not a swimmer. I remember being helped up the rope ladder and I remember the bitter cold. And 15 years later, and they all say the memories are as clear as ever. I literally remember stepping over the little ledge of the window to get onto the wing. An amazing feeling of hope, like, oh, we might actually live through this. 15 years later, their memories are clear, but their perception of that day has shifted a bit. In the last five years, these miracle passengers all say they've come to a similar realization about that day. There were 155 humans on that plane that day, and not all of them were the same ethnicities. There were different religious backgrounds. They spoke different languages. They identified gender differences, but we all came together as one. The most important lesson, we saw the best of humanity that day yeah. all around us and our fellow passengers. Obviously, Sully and Jeff and the crew and the first responders, we saw the best of people that day. And I want us to look for that again. Find the best of humanity mm -hmm. everywhere. We were given a, a gift no. yes. to be here to continue to help other people. Yeah. And so I would just challenge people, especially in today's world, I'm constantly saying, wow, this is a very selfish world we live in. Mm -hmm. What would you lose by letting go of some of that and actually helping someone else? Yeah. Like, we really could have talked to these guys all day. Their stories are so fascinating. So we've got lots more from each of the passengers. You can find their extended interviews on our website, WCNC.com. Reporting in Charlotte, Michelle Bowden, WCNC Charlotte. Wow, incredible wow. stories. I remember covering this when I was in Connecticut, mm -hmm. uh, but Larry, you were you were right here. Yeah, they brought the plane to Charlotte to, to the Air Museum, which will be the Sullenberger Museum this coming Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had a chance to go on the plane and literally sit in the cockpit where Captain Sully sat on that fateful wow. day. This was in right 2012, in right? 2012, and uh, to walk down the aisle there, you can see the seats. They were left exactly where they were. Some of the seats were turned over. There were flotation devices in some of those. But just to walk down that plane to wow. think what happened and the fact that wow. they brought it here to Charlotte. The Sullenberger Aviation Museum will open this coming summer here in Charlotte. Uh, out near the out near Douglas International Airport, it's going to be amazing when when it, when it opens up. Now, when I went to it, it was the old Air Museum, which mm -hmm. they brought that here and uh, reconstructed it, put it together, and uh, you could you could. Uh, the amazing thing at that time when they first brought it here, Captain Sully told the managers of the museum said, "When people walk by the plane, tell them to touch it." 
touch the plane. He said, why would you tell him to touch the plane? He goes, how many times do you like can you touch a miracle? No, it's so that. true. Yeah. Isn't that a great story? So did yes. you get to meet him personally? I, I, did, I didn't meet him that day, but I did get a chance to meet oh, him. That's awesome. They had a bunch of people from the media out there. He's so soft-spoken and so unassuming to think, what a, what a genius. How many pilots had the audacity, the power, the ability and uh, to do that? And he's a, he was also a flight trainer, so mm -hmm. he, had, he had all the accolades, but to take that plane and land it safely. The people, I've had a chance to talk to some of those people, uh, they were told to brace for impact, heads down, hands overhead. So when they braced for impact, they thought they were going to hit land. They had no idea mm. he was taking that plane. In the I plane. wonder if that landing felt different than they... Well, you know, they, some of them said it was, it was kind of a rough landing. Yeah. Because, you know, when you hit water, it's, it's still, it's still yeah. hard hit, it's a hard impact. Uh, but they, they still didn't... It wasn't until water started coming in or some looked out the window, we're, over, we're on water. Yeah. You know, they were almost shocked. Uh, yeah. When he was here wow. um, 10 years ago, my husband, Chris, actually got the chance to meet him. Oh, that's He excellent. was a guest speaker. Um, CMPD does this annual right. conference. They bring in different guests. Captain Sully spoke there. Yes, he yeah. spoke on the yeah. on the tenth anniversary, and yeah. Chris said it was amazing. Just such an inspiring uh, speaker. And we were talking about that this morning. That I mean, not only is he a hero, right. uh, but how often do you find someone, uh, a pilot, a hero that is also so inspirational, like mm -hmm. an inspirational speaker? And just like you said, by telling people touch it, why touch it? Yeah. Because how often. And do you get to touch a miracle? I don't think now, but just because of the way things will be, will be arranged at the new museum, it'll you'll be, be able to touch it. You won't it. be able to yeah. be able that close. But when they first brought it here, I mean, literally, you were like you could walk right up to it and yeah. touch any part of it, um, and you touched a miracle. Uh, yeah. just, uh, so a question: So that first story that you did back in 2012, when did they close the museum or that area? Uh, it, they're recon they're, it's a brand new museum okay. the building, uh, which was bigger, larger, Excellent. more up to date. Uh, basically, the old one was just a big warehouse. Oh, okay. This, this would be modernized, and it will have all of aviation history in it, especially North Carolina aviation and Charlotte aviation. Uh, out, it will be open this coming uh, summer. I don't mm -hmm. have the date on it yet, yeah. uh, but the airplane is there. And you're going to see the old, some of the original Piedmont Airlines plane, the old wow. DC-3s yeah. they used to fly. And just, I mean, it's a great, it's a great I mean, spectacle to see that all the different types of uh, uh, aviation equipment yeah. that they have out there. Um, just a couple people chiming in, Joy Mott, saying, I had my TV turned on right here in Charlotte. I wondered if anyone had survived, and then everyone appeared on the wings. Doesn't that just choke you up? Kinda? One of the ladies who was in the interview, the, the younger lady sitting there, she actually, a lot of the people jumped in the water. They were told, you know, yeah. when, you know you've crashed, yeah. get out of the plane. Have you seen the movie? With yes, Tom Hanks. It's yeah, so yeah. She, she literally jumped in the water. That was ice cold. It was, mm, it was January. Yeah, I can imagine. And she said she almost froze, it, but they pulled her out immediately when, yeah. when they realized that you can stand on the wing. But she was soaking wet. So, so yeah. There were a number, there were maybe a dozen of those people who actually jumped in the water that day. Well, and, that was the thing to mm -hmm. do. You know? And just general physics, you and I were talking about this. It's absolute perfection. You have to land that because if there's one degree, it's too far down. That's yeah. going to nose dive, and then oh. you're looking at a completely different story. Yes. So uh. it just shows the skill, but then also the reaction time. Well, that because is, yeah. yes. to realize that wow, we have nowhere else to go. Yeah. I have to land on water. An incredible man. And yeah. I've also heard nothing but great things about, thing like you about, said, about who yeah. he is as a human being. The thing so. about Captain Sullenberger is that he, is a, he was a flight trainer. So he taught pilots in addition to pilot himself. So he, you know, in some of the conversations, in big discussions about it, Many pilots are trained to take a plane back to the closest runway. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's what and, they were telling him to do, right? To do that. So many pilots may have tended to go towards an airport, and so the landing would have been on ground. How many pilots have said, you know what, that's the spot right there? Yeah. How many, how many would have the wherewithal to know, I'm going to land it on yeah, water? Yeah, this is what we need to do. Yeah. Uh, John Kelly just chiming in after hearing from some of those survivors saying, great lesson, find the best of humanity. Seriously. So uh, wow. keep chiming in. Let us know where you are. Of course, our web team is going to post uh, in the comments. Michelle has much more on these interviews, extended versions on our website uh, that you can watch as well. So we'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great Monday, everyone.